Observable Physical Properties of Matter. In this video, you are going to learn about all the different observable properties of matter, and then you are going to apply them to an object of your choice. So matter is anything that takes up space, which is also known as volume, and has mass. So your iPads are made of matter because they take up space and they have mass. Frogs, volleyballs, colored pencils, loving books, and tennis. All of these things take up space, meaning they have volume, and have mass. Now that we know that matter is anything that takes up space, meaning it has volume, and it has mass, now we need to understand what physical properties are. So physical properties is anything that can be observed or measured without changing the substance. So today, we're only going to focus on those observable properties of matter. To identify our observable physical properties of matter, we have to use our five senses. We're not going to use really any other special tools, just what we've got. So we're going to use our sight, especially our touch, sometimes hearing, definitely tasting, but only when it's safe and we're told we can, and our sense of smell. In your workbook, you're going to be filling out this chart of the physical properties of matter. And today, we'll remember, we're only focusing on observable properties. Color is the first observable physical property of matter. So in your chart, please write color. And yes, spelling counts. Texture is the next observable physical property of matter. So we have like soft, fuzzy, smooth, rough. Those are examples of texture. Are there a lot more? Absolutely. Now you're going to add texture as an observable property of matter in your chart. Yes, spelling counts. The next observable property of matter is luster. So the easy ones are dull and shiny. We also can call that metallic. We have glassy is another word to describe luster. Pearly and also greasy is another. And all of these are examples of luster. And when we get into, when you learn about rocks, you will learn even more. Please add luster to our observable properties of matter. Shape is the next observable property of matter. Tires on our vehicles are circles. Stop signs are octagons. Tiles on the floor might be squares. They might be rectangles. Hey, they might even be hexagons. So everyday objects have a shape. Please add shape to your observable properties chart. Next is smell. So it might smell like a flower or smell clean like a lemon. Might smell like fresh baked cookies or it might be a smell that isn't that pleasant. Add smell to our notes about observable properties of matter. Yep, spelling still counts. Taste is another observable property of matter. Might taste sweet, maybe sour, salty, or even bland. Be sure to only taste things that you have permission to because you don't want to taste something that is actually harmful to you. You guessed it. We're going to add taste to our observable properties of matter. Hardness is another property of matter. Right now, we're going to use it as a observable property of matter. However, when you learn about rocks, you'll actually learn that hardness is a measurable property of matter. So let's talk about it as an observable property. So it might be soft, like a kitten, or soft like uh, marshmallows, soft like frozen yogurt, or hardness might be hard like a diamond, which is actually the hardest natural object in the world, or hard like a hard hat, or even hard ice cream. Now this is hardness being a measurable property of matter, Mohs hardness scale, and we will talk about this a lot when you get to the rocks. But right now, we're going to focus on hardness as an observable property of matter. 
So please add hardness to our observable properties chart. And yep, spelling still counts. State of matter is our last observable property of matter. So we have solids, we have liquids, and we have gases. And look at how the particles are for the different states of matter. Solids, they're nice, uh, perfectly aligned. Liquids, you know, they're taking up their own space, but they're not perfectly in lines, and gases are kind of all over the place. So now these are some pieces of information about states of matter. Solids are rigid, they have a fixed shape, and they have a fixed volume, meaning they take up the same amount of space. Liquids, they're not rigid. They have no fixed shape because they take the shape of whatever they're in, but they do have a fixed volume, which we'll focus on later. And gases, guess what? Not rigid, no fixed shape, because they take the shape of anything they're in. And there's no fixed volume because we really can't contain them to measure it. I know this is shocking. We're adding state of matter to the observable properties of matter. Guess what? Spelling still counts. So I have a challenge for you, and yes, you must do it. Um, you're going to choose a small object you can hold in your hand. Okay, you're going to bring it to class the next time I see you. And on a piece of loose leaf, you need to put the object at the top along with your name, duh. All right, and you're gonna identify as many observable physical properties of matter as possible about the small object that we can hold in our hand, okay? Just remember, the more properties you list, the higher your possible score. So take your time, and if you need to, use that observable properties chart to help you. Good luck, and I can't wait for you to turn these in so I can see how well you learned about observable properties of matter. Good luck.